Hello everybody and welcome to your first day of SAT 2 chemistry. My name is Aksana Babchenka and I'll be your teacher for this entire course. I've taught SAT 2 chemistry many times in the past and it's my favorite subject. Um, this is, I'm now returning for a fourth summer um, to teach exactly SAT 2 chemistry. So let's begin. First, we're going to just cover the first chapter today, which is pretty basic, but you definitely need to know it before we go on. Oh, and by the way, um, I graduated from Brown very recently in 2009, and my major there was neuroscience with a pre-medical curriculum. Okay, let's begin. So the basic foundation. First, we have matter. What is matter? It is anything that occupies space, of course. It's very basic. And matter has mass. So these are very much intertwined. And mass is simply the matter the substance possesses. So it is sometimes confused with weight. And you want to be very careful about this because there is a very big difference between these two quantities, weight and matter. Weight is related to matter by this equation. Weight equals matter times g, which for Earth is um, 9.8 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration of the gravitational pull right there. Okay, but if we were on a smaller planet, um, somewhere somewhere far off in the galaxy, and if the gravitational pull was less, our weight would also be less. However, our matter our mass would still be the same, okay? So this quantity never changes. The mass of a substance never changes, of course, unless you break it apart. But the weight can change depending on the different um, gravitational pulls that we have present, okay? Then also inertia is very much intertwined with mass. This is one of the ways that we can measure mass. Inertia is the resistance of change in motion or resistance of change in position of something. Okay, so if something is very bulky, it has a lot of mass, it also has a lot of weight, um, then it will have a very high inertia. So if it's moving very quickly, it takes a lot of force to slow it down. Okay, or if it's standing, it takes a lot of force to move it. So its inertia is very large. Okay, let us go on. And then density. This is one of my favorite equations, and you definitely need to know it. So density is equal to mass over volume. And the way you can always remember this equation is you simply draw a heart, because of course we love density, and then you cross it out, because we actually don't. Okay, and look what we have. We have mass, M, over V, over volume, okay? So density is mass per unit volume. So the more dense a, sub a substance is, the more mass it has per unit volume. So if I told you um, one gram of, me uh, of uh, metal was this big and one gram of styrofoam was this big, who is more dense? The metal is, of course, more dense because the styrofoam has a far larger volume and then you put it down there in the denominator, that makes the whole thing really small, so its density is very low. But you can, of course, intuitively um, guess it as well without the equation, but you do need to know the equation, so just remember the heart with the slash through it. All right, let us move on. So states of matter. We have the solid, the liquid, and the gas. The solid, we have a definite volume and a definite shape. The liquid, we have a definite volume. Liquids cannot easily, easily be expanded or compressed. However, we have an indefinite shape. It can change forms, right? From one vase to another and so on. And gas, it's a whole different cookie to begin with. It has an indefinite